Thank you very much. Uh, so about three and a half years ago was the first time that I actually uh, was introduced to cephalopods, and I walked into a talk, and I saw this video uh, by Dr. Hanlon, who's an amazing scientist at Woods Hole, and I was just blown away. Uh, and so I was particularly, I got particularly interested in, a, in one of the proteins that's found in cephalopods uh, that enables some of these capabilities, and it's a protein called, called reflectin. Uh, and so we started working with this, with this protein as a material, initially learning how to make large amounts of it, and then learning how to, how to process it. And what we've done recently, the, the new thing that we've kind of done in this study, is we've learned how to apply this protein to a flexible polymeric film, uh, essentially tape that you can, something similar to what you would find in your drawer, uh, your scotch 3M tape. And so we, we put the protein on there kind of in the same way would put spackle on a wall, and then you can get uniform films. Uh, for example, there's a picture of a blue film over here. And then if you change the thickness of these films, uh, you can make them transparent so their optical properties can be described in a very simple fashion. And so you know, if you make a thicker film, you get something that you can see through. And you can take one of these pieces of tape and stick it on the slide, and that's shown here, uh, where you can see the UCI logo underneath this, this, this piece of tape. Now, what's, what's interesting about this is that you have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can actually deploy uh, this material. So now you've got this tape, and let's say I'm wearing this shirt, uh, you know, this pink uh, patterned shirt here. If I take all these stickers and put them all over myself, I can look one way under an optical uh, visualization and another way under, under an infrared camera, essentially. And you can see an example of that here. So here I've got a, a piece of, of a camouflage fatigue, and you've got three, three groupings of objects on it. So you have some uncoated, uh, uncoated tape, some un effectively an uncoated sticker, and then you have a checkerboard pattern of reflecting coated stickers, and then you have a leaf, and that's all on the top. And the, the tape and stickers, it, it, it all looks pretty similar on the top. It's very different from the leaf. Now when you look at it under, under an infrared camera, uh, active infrared visualization, not passive, uh, essentially, everything but the checkerboard pattern and the leaf disappears. Uh, so both of these uh, reflect uh, in the infrared. So now you can see that if, you, if you're wearing this, this pattern of stickers, it'll look one way in the day and another way at night, and it can potentially help you avoid detection. Now, the other nice thing that you can do is you can actually stretch these stickers. Uh, so I'm, I'm showing you an example here on this slide, where if you, if you take one of them and, and Again, under, under optical visualization, you have it above a camouflage fatigue, uh, and then when it's unstretched, it looks clear, and you can see that you can see that in the top, uh, and it looks fairly bright uh, under under infrared visualization. However, when you stretch it on the bottom, uh, it becomes opaque and it becomes orange, and it obscures the camouflage fatigue underneath it, um, and now it looks much much duller under infrared visualization. So if you have these stickers all over you and you're moving around, you could potentially shimmer, right? So if you're, if you're in forest, everything's reflecting in the infrared, you would be much, much harder to detect uh, than you would be normally. So this is just the first step, right? These, these probably aren't, aren't bright enough to be game-changing applications yet, uh, but it's a very, very nice demonstration of what you can do uh, by drawing inspiration from these, these amazing animals. What, what these animals do is kind of the equivalent of you floating around a room and, and, and turning into different pieces of furniture, as you saw in that, in that uh, video of the, of the cephalopod um, uh, underwater, right? So, so really, it's, it's something crazy. It's almost out of science fiction, but that's kind of the direction that we want to move. And these are, these are steps in that direction. Right, so, so just the new thing we've done, previously we've shown that you can cause similar changes with a chemical stimulus. 
Uh, and what we've done that's really different is use the mechanical uh, stimulus, just the stretching. And we've also increased the flexibility uh, of deployment of this material because, you know, having them as stickers basically gives you no limitations on the types of surfaces you can put them on. In fact, the, the tape that we use, this, this FEP tape, is used as a, as a as kind of a, specifically used as a, as a non-stick coating. So, so you could potentially, you know, coat very difficult to manufacture objects with, with this type of, uh, with this type of chemical. You know, the, the chemical stimulus we used before, you wouldn't necessarily want to douse yourself with, with, with acetic acid or, or which is very concentrated vinegar to cause these types of changes. So effectively what you do if you, if you stretch it you know, along, you know, along the direction of the tape, uh, you cause a, a change in the thickness of, of the film, so it just gets a little bit thinner and that causes its, its, its optical properties to change. Uh, and so we're doing some work on understanding what's happening there at the nanoscale, the structural level, how the, the protein structure changes as you have this, this global uh, kind of stimulus. So, you know, I'll, I'll give this in terms of uh, reflectance uh, percentages. So right now it's 15, 20 percent uh, of the light is, is reflected. Uh, and so we'd like to get that up to 60, 70 percent. And the way you can do that is making multi-layer structures that exactly uh, imitate the types of multi-layer structures found in, in, in cephalopod skin. Uh, you know, because after all, they have these bright shimmering colors. And actually there's a there's another slide that kind of illustrates this, right? So if you make these, these multi-layer structures and you make the right uh, type of, uh, of, of, of morphology to the film, uh, then you could potentially increase the brightness significantly. So, you know, the goal is to make something that's, that's very easy to use and disposable. And because you have, you use a, a standard manufacturing technique, this, this doctor blading type coating process, I use very inexpensive tape, and we can actually make surprisingly large amounts of the protein, uh, it, it wouldn't cost too much to essentially put it all over yourself. And you really want it to be disposable. If you have a roll of tape, you know, you, you, you put on some pattern that you really, that, that you need for, for a specific purpose, or you label something with, with, with a signature for a specific purpose, and then you're done with it and you just throw it away. So that's, that's another potential advantage that it, this could be you know, quite inexpensive and disposable. Right. So, so you know, you could uh, collect thousands and thousands of squid and and extract the protein from them, but I think that would uh, that might be animal cruelty on some level. Um, so we've we've engineered bacteria to to make the protein for us, and we make very very large amounts of the protein uh, in any E. coli. So we've optimized it to be about a a, a gram of protein that's 98 percent or more pure per liter. Uh, which is which is a very very substantial amount. Uh, you know, you can I, I could literally we make so much that you can literally have a, a pile of clumps of the protein in the palm of your hand, um, which which is it's a lot. So I, I think uh, you know, the brightness uh, that we discussed before is definitely one thing. Um, um, and then in another direction that we're kind of moving is, is to potentially extend uh, 
or, or develop materials that are either reflecting-based or reflecting-inspired uh, that will work in the same way in the thermal infrared. Uh, and once you can do that, you can disguise your heat signature, and that will be very, very relevant uh, for, for not only uh, military, obviously, applications, but also for, for uh, you know, uh, energy applications, renewable energy applications, to, to uh, control the way we exchange heat with the environment. Uh, and, and so that's, that's uh, our ongoing work. Uh, I think we're, we're in the very, very early stages of it. Thank you.